Hey guys, welcome to online business class and today we are starting with chapter 2 form of business organization. Before we are learning about business organization, let us learn about the meaning of chapter itself. So chapter name is form of business organization as we all know what is business organization in the first chapter. We'll start with the first meaning that is forms. Forms is nothing but types of business. So this chapter only means the different various types of business organization. So with this we are starting with the forms of business organization types different types or forms so we have a five category in this chapter first one is sole proprietorship partnership joint hindu family cooperative society joint stock company with these we'll briefly talk about this features advantage disadvantage and meaning and definition so let us move on to sole proprietorship Sole proprietorship. It refers to a form of business organization which is owned, managed, and controlled by individual who is recipient of all profit and bearer of all risk. In the sense, he is a single owner. He don't share any profit or loss. One man capital. He will invest a whole capital. So unlimited liability. We'll talk about that later. Less legal formalities. He don't have to face uh, many legal formalities to form sole proprietorship than one man control. Let us look at the definition given by J.L. Hansen. Sole trade is a type of business unit where a person is solely responsible for providing the capital, for bearing the risk of the enterprises and for the management of business. Simply means he is all responsible, he has an idea and he has to bear the risk of the whole enterprises. He has to manage all the business day to day activity. That's the meaning. So this is the definition. You may ask for the two marks. Next is features. In the features, we have a first point that is formation and close. Hardly any legal formalities are required to start a sole proprietorship business, though in the case one may require a license. There is very less legal formalities in order to form or in order to close. There is no complex activities which is exist. This is the one feature. And the second one is liability. Sole proprietor has unlimited liability. This implies that the owner is personally responsible for payment of debts in case of assets of a business are not sufficient enough to meet all the debts. So he has to bear all the liability. He is the whole and sole responsible of his business. He has to bear all the liability. He can't shift the responsibility towards another person sole risk bearer and profit recipient the risk of the failure of business is borne all alone by the sole proprietor however if the business is successful the proprietors enjoy all the benefits so either a loss or a profit he has to bear all the thing which is exist in his business so because he controlled it and he made that business profit or he made that business loss so he has to bear either profit or loss then the fourth point is control the right to run the business and make all decisions lies absolutely with the sole proprietor he can carry out his plans without any interference from others nobody will interfere in your business because you are the real owner and you are the real controller so nobody will interfere in your ideas or your way fifth point no separate legal entity entity is nothing but existence in the eye of law no distinction is made between the sole trader and his business as business does not have any identity separate from the owner therefore held responsible for all activities of business so if something goes wrong in his business probably that is loss he has to bear so there is no separate distinction between his business and the trader he is a uh, hold responsible and the whole blame or the all success will be depended on the person next point that is lack of business continuity since the owner and the business are one and the same death insanity the business and may even cause closure of business that means as a single person due to the death the business may discontinue or any other reason insanity or even some other cases business will not continue forever there is a certain period it will end in some particular day that's why this is not as much continuity as other form of business like in partnership joint stock company etc we are moving on to merits 
first one is quick decision making yes as you are the single owner you no need to ask any decisions or you no need to discuss with any other persons that will end up in quick decision making if you if you want to do something just do that's it direct incentives you'll get all the benefit without sharing nobody will take your profit or loss if you got profit you don't need to share with anybody if you have got loss nobody will accept the loss nobody will come forward to accept or carry out the burden because that's a single owner and you have to bear the all benefits from it or even losses direct incentives next sense of accomplishment imagine you are an average person in a class one day somebody challenges you to do to come first in your class so you started putting effort and then in your report card you got a first rank so on that time you have a sense of accomplishment that is okay i did something i did something good i did something better so that is a accomplishment here sense of accomplishment when you are doing a business as solely it's your idea you making profit the business is growing that in the sense called as sense of accomplishment you have that sense okay i am doing this so next easy of formation and close it's very easy to start or it's very easy to close because there is less legal formalities as we studied in a features it contain very legal less legal formalities as that it's easy to form and easy to close we are now jumping on to limitation every form has its own advantage as well as disadvantage so this is the first sole proprietorship disadvantage first one is limited resource as he is a single person he can't bring a huge capital resource so that's why he has a limited resource as he can invest his ancestors property or loans or he can borrow from somebody else that is very quite limited then second one is limited life of business concern this business can't be forever that is lack of continuity so for that this business may end up very quicker when compared to other types of business or forms of business unlimited liability as we discussed this is unlimited liability the owner has to bear all the liability so this is the limitation of this sole proprietorship fourth one limited managerial skills has he is a single person he can't be expert in all the areas so that brings to this point he can't expert in some cases in some areas he may good in some areas he may not good because of this mnc companies hire a professionals for you not know, to complete specified jobs in sole proprietorship he tried to cover all the job that will end up in sometime mess because he is not as good as professionals so this points is he has a very limited managerial abilities we are moving on to joint hindu family business it is owned by the member of undivided joint hindu family and managed by the eldest member of the family known as karta it is governed by provision of hindu law the basis of membership is birth in particular family by taking birth you will become a, a member in that family so the most important point is karta the eldest of this family is known as karta so they may ask who is karta it's an undivided hindu family who started business is called joint hindu family business in joint hindu family next topic is features first one is formation for this business there should be at least two members in the family and some ancestor property to be inherited by the family that's a first formation second one is liability the liability of all members except the karta is limited to their share property however karta has an unlimited liability so everybody else in this they are called members so every member has a limited liability limited liability is nothing but the amount they are invested is called limited liability unlimited liability is will be on karta so he has to bear all the unlimited liability next is control the control of a business is lies in karta so as he is an elder he will manage like most of the decisions will be taken by the karta he takes all the decisions and and he is authorized to manage the business his decisions are blinding on the other member continuity the business continues even after the death of karta as the next elder member take up the position of karta leaving the business stable so it will be stable as when compared to the sole proprietorship 
minor member the inclusion of a individual into the business occurs due to the birth in the hindu undivided family hence minor can also be a member of this business merits the first one is effective control the karta can promptly take decisions as he has the absolute decision making power as he is a head of that business he will take a strict decisions regarding any activities of business continued business existence the death lucency of karta will not affect the business as next elder member will take up the position as next elder position will is taking up the business of the position of the karta the business will be continued limited liability the limited liability is only stuck with the members except karta that's what this point says the liability of all members except karta is limited it give them relief secrecy complete secrets regarding business decisions can be maintained by karta because he is an head most of the decisions or most of the secret of the business is kept secret loyalty and cooperation it helps in securing better and cooperation and greater loyalty from all the members who run the business the main thing is in this business because all of them are from one family background or family the loyal and cooperation will be there and they moreover they has to follow the rules of karta which uh, he is a head of their family limitations limited capital there is shortage of capital as it is limited to the ancestor property most of the properties are came from the ancestor as they are all from uh, from one family or one parents like that so the ancestor property will be a common so it limits the capital unlimited liability of karta it makes him less enterprising so he is having a very burden situation because he has to bear all the risk in the business has a karta hasty decisions as karta is overburdened with a work he may take hasty that means urgent and unbalanced decisions sometime because as he is a elder person other member will not go against his decisions so most of the time with the burden hasty decisions are made by the karta fourth point limited managerial skills as we talked about this since the karta can't be expert in all areas of management the business may suffer as a result of his unwise decisions because he is not expert in all areas his inability to decide effectively may result into poor profit or even loss of the organization next is quite important topic that is partnership first we'll talk about a meaning partnership is a voluntary association of two or more persons who agree to carry on some business jointly and share its profit or loss it's nothing but volunteers association or coming together that means with some ideas capital etc it is blind by the indian partnership act 1932 then definition partnership is a relation which subsist that means survive between persons who have agreed to combine their property labor skill in some business and to share the profit therefrom between them this definition is given by the indian contract act first features that is formation the partnership form of business organization is governed by the indian partnership act 1932 it came into existence through legal agreement wherein the agreement and conditions governing the relationship among the partner sharing of profit or loss liability the partners of firm have unlimited liability personal assets may be used for repaying of debts in case of business assets are insufficient in some cases like loss they has to pay by selling their personal properties risk bearing the partners bear the risk involved in running a business as a team the reward comes in the form of profit which are shared by the partners in a ratio like in most of the time equal ratio or in some cases they may depend on how much they are invested based on the ratio decisions making and control the partners share among themselves the responsibility and decision making and control of day by day activities decisions are generally taken with a mutual consent by discussing with the other partners they can come to a final decision or final conclusion
continuity partnership is characterized by a lack of continuity of business since the death retirement insolvency or insanity of any partner can bring an end to the business most of the time death is not an option here because insanity is possible and insolvency is also possible and the retirement if that those people are having a same age so lack of continuity of business is possible in partnership Six point membership. The minimum number of members needed to start a partnership firm is two, while the maximum is fifty. Right now, according to Company Rules 2014, it's been changed in this 19, 2019 to 20 year. As this video is made in this year, the present number is fifty. Next one is mutual agency. Every partner is an implied agency of other partners and of the firm. Every partner is liable for act performed by other partners on behalf of firm. They are the representative of the business firm which is they are running. They are all responsible for the profit or whatever the situation in that business. The whole partner is responsible for that. Merits. Ease of formation and close. A partnership firm can be formed easily by putting an agreement between the prospective partners into place, whereby they agree to carry out the business of the firm and share risk. There is no compulsion with a respect to registration of the firm. Closure of the firm is too is an easy task. It's not mandatory to register. It's easy to start and easy to close. balanced decision making because of individual is not forced to handle different activities this not only reduce the burden of the work but also lead to fewer efforts in judgment as consequences decisions are likely to be more balanced more funds in a partnership the capital is contributed by number of partners this makes it possible to raise large amount of funds in the business Fourth one, sharing of risk. Risk involved in running a partnership firm are shared by all the partners. This reduces the annexity burden and stress on individual partners. So it will split into number of partners like that. So the burden will be distributed to each partners equally. Secrecy. A partnership firm is not legally required to publish its accountings. and submit its report hence it is able to maintain confidentiality of information relating to its operation so that will maintain the secrets we are moving on to limitation first one is unlimited liability partners are liable to pay debts even from their personal resource in case of business assets are not sufficient to meet its debts so in those cases they has to pay the debts by selling the personal assets limited resource there is a restriction on the number of partners and hence the contribution in term of capital investment is usually not sufficient to support large scale business operation as there is a limit the budget will also be a limit possibility of conflicts partnership is run by a group of persons wherein decisions making authority is shared difference in opinion on some issue may lead to disputes between partners further decisions of one partner are blinding on other partners lack of continuity partnerships come to an end with a death retirement insolvency or you can see that is a madness of any partner so that means it's having a lack of continuity lack of public confidence partnership firm is not legally required to publish its financial reports or make other related information public it is therefore difficult for any members of the public to ascertain the true financial status of partnership firm as a result the confidence of public in partnership is generally low because of the fear or doubt on that particular business types of partners this is the new topic general or active partner such partner takes active part in the management of the firm and the second one is sleeping or dormant partner he does not take active part in the management of the firm through he invest money shares profit or loss and unlimited liability but he will not participate in any management activity part secret partner he participate in business secretly without disclosing his association with the firm to general public his liability is also unlimited 
नेक्स्ट वन इज नॉमिनल पार्टनर सच अ पार्टनर ओनली गिव हिस नेम एंड गुडविल टू द फॉर्म ही नाइदर इन्वेस्ट मनी नॉर टेक प्रॉफिट बट हिस लाइबिलिटी इज अनलिमिटेड पार्टनर्स बाय एस्टोपल्स ही इज द वन हु बाय हिस वर्ड्स और कंडक्ट गिव्स इंप्रेशन टू आउटसाइड वर्ल्ड दैट ही इज अ पार्टनर ऑफ फॉर्म वेर एस एक्चुअली ही इज नॉट हिज लाइबिलिटी इज अनलिमिटेड टूवर्ड्स अ थर्ड पार्टी who has entered in dealing with the firm the fifth one partners by holding out he is the one who is falsely declared partner of firm whereas actually he is not and even after becoming aware of it he does not deny it his liability is unlimited towards the party who has deal with the firm on the basis of declaration except that it won't any other management activities profit or loss will be not shared on with this partner minor a minor is a person who has not attained the age of 18 a minor is incompleted to enter into a valid contract with others he cannot become partner in any firm however a minor can be admitted to the benefits of partnership firm with the mutual consent of all other partners in such cases his liability will be limited to the extent of the capital contributed by him and in the firm he will not be able to take any active part in the management of the firm thus a minor can share only the profit and cannot ask it to bear the loss this is a quite good point types of partnership a is classification on the basis of duration this is also an important topic types of partnership one is partnership at will these types of partnership exist at the will of the partners it can contain a long as the partnership want and it's terminated when a partners gives a notice or withdrawal from partnership to the firm so it's like will will is the time where he is willing to stay in the partner as a partner the second type of partnership particular partnership these types of partnership is formed for a specified period to accomplish a particular project like construction of building from one month to other month like from jan to december like that next one is classification based on liability the first one is classification on basis of duration as we talked about a and this one is b classification on the basis of liability general partnership in general partnership the liability of partner is unlimited and joint the partners enjoy the right to participate in the management of the firm and their act are binding on each other as well as on the firm registration of this firm is an optional in general partnership in that we have a second that is on the basis of liability we have a second type that is a limited partnership in this the liability at least one partner is unlimited whereas the other partner may have a limited registration of firm is compulsory in this type of partnership partnership deed the written agreement on a stamped paper which specify the terms and condition of partnership is called as a partnership deed it is generally include the following points the points are name of the firm location and address of the firm duration of the firm's business investment made by each partners profit sharing ratio of the partners terms related to salaries withdrawing interest on capital and interest on withdrawing of partners will be also mentioned duties and obligations of partners eighth point that is h terms governing admission retirement expulsion of partners and then method of solving dispute we are moving on to registration of partnership registration is not compulsory it is optional as we all know but it is always beneficial to get the firm registered the consequences of non register of a firm are as follow a partner of an unregistered firm cannot file suit against the firm or the partner the firm cannot file a suit against the third party the firm cannot file a case against its partners the procedure for getting a firm register is as follow first one is submission of application in the prescribed form to the register of the firm the application should contain the following 
particulars name of the firm location of the firm name of other places where the firm carried on the business the date which or when each partner joined the firm name and the address of the partners duration of the partners this application should be signed by all partners deposit of required fees with the registration of the firm the register after approval will make an entry in the register of the firms and will be subsequently issue a certificate of registration by this the firm will come to a legal existence this is the part 1 video after watching this video check out the link below for the second video part 2 if you like this video hit like button subscribe to our channel like always see you in next class